Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, the Arkansas State Library's collaboration with the uh, Sherman Grinberg Film Library. Um, so first I'm going to have Lance here from uh, Sherman Grinberg introduce himself and talk a little bit about uh, the library and what they do. Hello, I'm Lance. I'm the manager of the Media Archives and Licensing, the Sherman Grinberg Film Library. I've been involved in the preservation, restoration, access, and licensing of motion pictures and sound recordings for 25 years now. On the last five years, I've been working with the Sherman Grinberg Film Library. We're the home of the historic newsreel collections, the Paramount and American Pathé newsreel collection. The library goes from the um, span of the newsreels starting in 1897 and going all the way to 1957. Sherman Grinberg, the person, was an amazing person that um, came up with the idea of helping studios and production companies to um, create what became stock footage and to um, work towards sharing that for other production companies. He originally worked at 20th Century Fox, where he was an accountant, and he convinced the studio executives of the idea of rather than um, use and then dispose of films that were used in Hollywood features, to utilize those same films or the outtakes of those films for our stock footage. So we could say that Sherman Grinberg was an early pioneer of stock, what became stock footage. In 1957, Sherman found out that the Pathé Newsreel Collection was gonna, um, was closing down and that the collection of historic newsreels was gonna be available to, through an auction. We wound up getting the money together and obtaining the Pathé Newsreel Collection. In 1963, he along with executive producer David Walper, who created um, Roots and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, one of my favorite executive producers. They worked, they wound up combining forces and bought the Paramount Newsreel in 1963. The Sherman Grinberg Film Library worked for many decades to um, provide the stock footage. They grew to the point of representing ABC News, in several of the film studios. Most of that material has been returned to the original owners, but the last five years, we've been very focused on the digitization and restoration of the newsreels. It's a massive undertaking. And what we do is that we'll bring the films in, we repair them, with the old nitrate, we'll have to go um, and re usually repair every splice because the splices dry up over time. We'll combine those reels into a larger reel known as a scan reel. The scan reel is then digitized on our laser graphic film scanner, which is a professional 35 millimeter film scanner. It's then quality controlled against the original catalog cards. The material is then broken down into clips, which are, um, there may be multiple clips in a story. Once it's clipped, it then goes to our um, wonderful team of catalogers, many of whom worked or have worked in the news media, a lot of them working for CNN in, a, in Atlanta. Once the material has been um, gone, goes through cataloging and the metadata or keywords it, are created, it then gets uploaded into our website. There are now over 36,000 clips on our website and also gets shared on the Getty Images website. Awesome. Um... And, and I'm Danielle Butler. Um, I'm the manager of digital services here at the State Library. 
Um, we exist to serve as the information hub for state agencies, legislators, and legislative staffs. We also provide guidance and support to local public libraries in Arkansas. We work to provide the resources, services, and leadership necessary to meet the educational, informational, and cultural needs of Arkansans. Um, and I guess this was in fall of last year, um, you reached out to another staff member here in collection development, Katie Walton, about um, getting some copies of those, of those newsreels pertinent to Arkansas into our collection. What kind of drove you to contact us? In 2000 and 2006, I worked for the State Archives of Georgia. During that time, I helped a lot of museums, libraries, and archives put together plans to preserve, restore, digitize, and provide access to their media. As I started to go through our website, our holdings, I started to see a pattern emerge that we had wound up collecting a lot of material from the newsreels that relate to the different states. So my goal was to reach out to the different states to begin to share the material. Great, yeah, and we were very excited whenever you reached out to us. Um, we previously didn't really have much um, media in our digital collections at all. And um, this kind of opened a door for us to begin thinking about digitizing some of our own material. And so since you reached out and we've started adding some of the Sherman Grimberg film to our collection. We've also um, decided to get some equipment so we can now digitize um, VHS and cassette tapes. And so we can get some of that stuff from our collections up. And I think that will um, be really great. And uh, you giving us those videos sort of showed us that um, getting things digitized and up could fit pretty neatly into our existing workflows. So you kind of acted as catalyst for that. So that was really great. Um, yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about um, how you guys provide access to the Sherman Grimberg materials and maybe um, share, maybe a screen share of uh, what that portal looks like with us? Sure, I'd be delighted to. So the, on newsreels, within the Paramount and Pathé newsreel collections, our first point of information about what is on these films is the catalog records that we hold. We are fortunate to still have the original catalog records created from both companies. <clears throat> Excuse me. The catalog cards were then microfilmed. The microfilm ultimately became I believe the, one of the very first databases for libraries and archives is called Personal Librarian. Um, it's antiquated, but we're very fortunate to have the database. From the database, we're able to create finding aids. The finding aids basically play the role of here is a document of films that we may have within the holdings. Once we know what people are interested in, we're always delighted to help um, librarians and archivists and researchers and students look for the material. We also, as working with different companies like Getty Images, we started to compile material in different subjects, world wars, fashion, Academy Awards or Hollywood type films, different topics that we thought people and researchers would be excited about seeing. Within our website, we now have so much material to share, but let's go ahead and I'll pull up the website and I will show how we can make sense easily of the material related to your state, Arkansas. Okay, so if we go to the Sherman Grinberg Film Library website, which is shermangrinberg.com, we'll come to the front page, the home page, and we could quickly click on Browse Collection. Once we pull up the Browse Collection, we see 
an ungodly amount of footage, 36,000 clips today. Let's go ahead and see how do we navigate this and focus specifically on footage about Arkansas. So we will go ahead and we will start by entering the term Arkansas into the search box. We'll pull it up and we're in what is called the grid format. If we go to uh, in the upper right hand corner, we see request clips, login, and the four little squares. Let's click on the four little squares. Let's go from grid view to table view. Orange table view, we're now in columns. So I could go into this fourth column, which is the date column, click the up arrow one time and put it into, it will initially go into decreasing date order. So if I click the up arrow one more time, we're now in increasing date order. From increasing date order, we see that the earliest piece that has been found and digitized about Arkansas is a silent film from 1925. We can go ahead and click on the image and watch this for a second. It is Peach Orchid Harvest near Nashville, Arkansas. Hit play. And see the footage of the peach harvest. We can go ahead and close that and click on the image, click on summary, and we will see the title, the file name, the date, the description. We will see the keywords. All of our keywords are hyperlinks. We can go ahead and look at the, this, look at the file name. The file name is the sequential numbering of combined newsreel footage onto the bigger scan reels. So if we look at this number, scan reel 003667, that is its proper scan reel number. The second group is where on that reel will we find this film? The third is, is this a clip? In this case, it is the first clip, but it could be multiple clips. We'll go ahead and highlight the file name, Control C if you're utilizing a PC, Apple C if on a Mac, hit the little X to close, click on the image, click on the word play, right click to where it says save video as. It is at this point that I could remove the number that initially comes up and paste in my file name or scan reel number. I am now in a position to save this to a folder or to my desktop as an MP4, which I could then use to um, share with editors or in a presentation. Perfect, thank you. So. Yeah. Thanks so much for showing us that walkthrough. That was really informative. Um, so I also wanted to talk a little bit about sort of how we selected from all of those Arkansas offerings you just showed what we wanted to display in our repository. Um, so in addition to what you offered us online, you guys also sent us some of those um, internal database mentions that had Arkansas in the description. So we've gotten some things from that and some things from the online portal. Um, and we tried to go with things that we felt like were majority Arkansas content, not necessarily just mentioned Arkansas or had someone from Arkansas in them. Um, and that, that limited us a little bit. I think we ended up with about 30 videos of the 60 or so that you guys had in the online database, which is, I think, a great number um, of things that we felt like were majority Arkansas related. Um, and then we've used that internal finding aid to sort of narrow things down. Um, and we're cleaning up the data a little bit and we're sending you little chunks at a time and you're checking to see if it's able, you're able to digitize it or if you've already got it. And um, and we're really expanding our collection and I love that this collaboration is sort of ongoing and we're sending you things and, and we're getting things back and um, we're up to about 
um, 37 videos in our digital collections and um, it's growing all the time. I think I've got about five in the queue to process right now. So we're almost over 40. Um, and so hopefully with time, we'll, we'll keep adding to that and that will be awesome. Um, and I just wanted to kind of show um, our patrons what it looks like on our end to view those and sort of some searchability functionality we've tried to add to make things a little easier for the types of users we have. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen here. So um, here is just our Arkansas State Library um, website. So if you go to services, that will kind of show you everything that we do. And our digital collections are here under the Arkansas Documents Digital Collections tab. So you can kind of open that and that brings you into our digital collections interface. Um, we've added all of these to what we call our Arkansas collection, which is anything that we've decided to add to the collection that has um, media relevant to the culture and history of Arkansas. So we've got um, mostly um, physical books and media in this collection, but we're digitizing things all the time. And we're now adding these videos from you guys. So I want to just click into that collection and kind of show people what that interface looks like. So you can just browse here. And similar to kind of what your interface looks like with a little librarian spin, we've got some, um, some metadata here. Um, all of these items are first cataloged in our library catalog, and then we use those library catalog records to create this um, description here that's on our website. Um, so we have, you know, subject headings here that match the Library of Congress, but if you're not familiar with the Library of Congress subject headings, we've also applied these themes, which we think are a really great way to um, get researchers to things they may be looking for. So if you're interested in seeing politics as related to Arkansas, you could click this and sort of see um, different clips that we've acquired that have to do with various politicians and political activity. Um, there was interestingly, um, Senator McClellan from Arkansas was on the McCarthy he hearing committee. So um, there's some content from the McCarthy hearings here, which I think is is pretty interesting. Um, and a lot of presidents came to Little Rock that I wasn't aware of. Roosevelt, uh, Truman, Eisenhower, while he was campaigning for president. So we've gotten a lot of that here, which is pretty exciting. Um, and then you can further drop by date if you want. Um, so there's a lot of options here. Um, and I just kind of wanted to also show some specific examples of videos from each of these categories. So um, the other categories that we've got, I'm just going to back up here. We've got politics, general news, sports, disasters, agriculture, industry, and the military. Um, so those are kind of the, the bigger categories that we've decided to break things into. So to start off with, um, we've got politics. And I wanted to start off with this video three, which shows um, President Truman giving a speech in Little Rock um, at the uh, dedication of War Memorial Stadium. So I'm just going to play a little bit of that real quick. So I think that one's really interesting, especially because a lot of these newsreels don't have audio. So um, that one's got some good audio. Apparently there were about 12,000 Arkansans that attended his speech here at War Memorial Stadium. Um, and that opened in 1948. So he came the next year in 1949 to give that speech. Um, in the same visit, um, he and the newly uh, elected governor, Sid McMath, went on a little uh, tour in Little Rock. They walked down Main Street here, which I thought was pretty cool. I've seen a lot of photographs of this, but I've never seen footage of it. It's pretty interesting to see everybody hanging out to see the president walk down the street. I just feel like that would not have happened today. <laughs> um, so there's that one. And then um, as related to just sort of general news topics, um, there was a memorial that was erected in 1936 
that commemorated a conflict between Hernando de Soto and the Tula tribe um, of Southwest Arkansas. And the Arkansas History Commission actually erected the statue in Caddo Gap, Arkansas. And this is the dedication ceremony. Um, it was believed that there was a conflict in 1541 between the Tula tribe and um, Hernando de Soto, but it was later found out given archaeological evidence that it didn't actually happen there, but the monument is still there. And it's, it's interesting that we have this, this footage of them dedicating it, and then we later found out that it didn't even happen on that site. So I thought that was kind of a fun fact. Um, and then uh, one of my favorite videos is um, some baseball spring training that was covered. Um, and it's got sound. It's kind of fun. I could watch them run through that baseball 15 times. It's so funny. Um, so the, the brothers there that just busted through that paper were um, Dizzy and Daffy Dean. They're two of the most famous baseball players from Arkansas. They both played for the St. Louis Cardinals. And I think that this video is especially interesting because this is the last season they played together. Um, Daffy ended up getting injured and he never returned to Major League Baseball. So I thought that that was really interesting. Um, and then for disasters, um, we have uh, some footage of a drought in Arkansas. Um, and this footage is from the Red Cross providing local assistance. And um, as you can see, there's a, a lovely helpful uh, caption here that says this happened in England, Arkansas. Now we're buffering. Some footage of the drought ravaged land, cow attempting to graze. This one has a little bit of sound. It's not, it's not too much. Um, so these are school children going to get rations from the Red Cross. Um, and the Red Cross didn't start providing rations in Arkansas until 1931. Interestingly, sometime in January, um, there was a riot because they didn't feel that the Red Cross had enough rations to provide. So I don't know if it was before or after this video was taken, but there was a citywide riot where they um, broke into a bunch of stores and demanded food. Um, so that, that, that may be why they, the news decided to come do some coverage here. But I just think this, this is a, a really interesting video. And then um, there's this video of a, a peach farm in Nashville, Arkansas. Um, peaches were actually, they started growing them here um, after a certain variety was developed in Georgia, which you might know a lot about being from Georgia, Lance. Um, but the, uh, the Albert variety of peaches, Alberta, Alberta variety of peaches um, started being grown in Georgia and they made their way to Arkansas via rail car. And after that, um, the peach industry sort of exploded in Arkansas for a while. Um, this particular farm was, um, you can read it on one of the top of the barrels, it says Burt Johnson, Arkansas. Um, he had about 4,000 acres of peach land um, and he was known as the peach king. Um, but then the depression hit and uh, his farm kind of went under and then um, uh, industrial peach growing had all but disappeared in Arkansas by the 1970s. So it's, it's really interesting that this one specific farm was showcased because it was one of the most famous farms in the state. So, um, and then the last one I wanted to highlight um, is it's sort of our, our example of industry in Arkansas. Um, which I don't really think of Arkansas as sort of an industry heavy state. I always think of us as an agriculture state. So it's interesting to see them um, mining bauxite here. Apparently in World War II, Arkansas was one of the largest producers of bauxite. Um, it was used to create aluminum during the war. Um, and you see here the majority of the laborers are African American. Um, this was in Sweet Home, which is a historically black town. Um, it's a township within Pulaski County. Um, which is where I live. It's in the, the northeastern part of the city. Um, 
And it, the impacts of this mining were seen by the community for a long time and they're still dealing with uh, some sort of, uh, they did strip mining. So there's, there was a lot of damage left behind after the mining was finished, but um, it's, it's great to see this footage. Um, so it's, I think it's, it's really great to kind of see what context we can give these videos and how they can help researchers sort of bring those stories to life. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else we get to add to the collection um, as we as we work our way through that finding aid some more um, and discover more things to add. Um, and did you want to discuss how you you want to partner with some other libraries in the state? Sure. Uh, let me just share that students and researchers can always utilize the footage for their work. Um, the only thing we ever ask is if anyone wants to license the material that they contact us directly. But we are always looking for nonprofit organizations, museums, libraries, archives, and schools to share our history, our historic newsreel is worth with no cost at all. We see this as a wonderful opportunity to bring the material back to the communities that understand the stories and care about the stories. I especially love it when there's relatives of different people that I meet in these newsreels. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I, today, you know, I didn't know much about the historical context of these videos. I haven't had a lot of time to dig into them and um, selecting a couple for today, I was able to do some research and each of them had a very interesting story to go along with them. And so um, I think they're a really rich addition to our collection. I really appreciate you guys sharing them with us. Um, is there anything you else you, you wanted to share with anyone today? We, we see this as really exciting and we see our role as taking care of the collections and trying to preserve, but more importantly, we love working with historians and people that understand why these stories are important to your community. So we hope that all we're able to share more material and to that end, welcome any opportunity to share with students, researchers, museums, libraries, archives, communities, schools. Wonderful. Thank you. It was great talking to you today. It's my pleasure. Thank you.